what's up guys and gals welcome back to the nerd castle today in the world of indie games we'll be taking a look at a title called tunguska the visitation now with even more so this is one of those games that we covered it about a year ago and it was a rough imitation of stalker that's really ultimately what the game is is you've been sent to a place called the zone in russia to investigate the tunguska whatever the thing that blew up in the sky and took out like a million square miles of trees and stuff weird stuff has started to happen and the creatures that were mutated by that produce various i guess components to serums that can do things like cure cancer and whatnot and so it's led to a flood of people going into this dangerous mutant filled area in order to hunt those mutants and get their parts we are one such character who is an investigative journalist that's been sent there and we are going to be running around with AKMs, and we're going to be running around with Makarovs and Scorpions and all that kind of stuff, trying to get rid of mutants and craft things and generally just survive in the hinterland. Over the last year and a half or so since the last time we covered the game, this game has had multiple DLCs come out for it. It has had a ton of polish. It's had a ton of patches. If there's one thing you can say about the developer of this game, it's that he is prolific, sometimes patching twice in one day. Uh, this guy likes to move, and he apparently really cares about this project because he is constantly polishing and fiddling and messing with it. And so while it is a little bit of kind of like a rough, uncut gem, it gets better and better as time goes along. And we're going to be checking it out here today for about 30 minutes. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, if you wanted to hang out with me live, you're more than welcome to do that by going to my Discord. I ping it every single time I decide to go live and stream, and you are welcome to join me. So here we are in Tunguska. This game is isometric. It pops down from above, and it's gonna take you a little while to get used to the way that the controls function and to get your sensitivity kind of dialed in straight. But once you do that, the game actually controls fairly well with your characters facing and the camera rotating in alignment with your mouse. We have different weaponry. If we press the tab key right here, we've got kind of a Escape from Tarkov style or Diablo style grid inventory where we can store up stuff. My character is Ernst Peckery, investigative reporter from the United States. We've been here for four days trying to figure out what's happening here inside Russia. Uh, so anyways, we're going to try to do a quest here today and maybe fight some mutants and have a good time. If such a thing can actively be had while things are trying to consume your flesh. I need to turn that off because I don't know if the radio is going to DMCA me or not. It plays like Russian music and I don't know if I'm going to get DMCA'd. So our mission, as we choose to accept it right now, is that we need to go and run a military blockade because there's been a rumor that there is an anomaly out here in the zone that will repair any piece of hardware that you put inside of it. And so obviously there's a lot of parties that are interested in that because it would take all the useless scrap guns and all the useless scrap machinery and whatnot inside this sort of, I guess, embargoed and also blockaded area. And it would allow you to get fresh new stuff. So we've been given this AKM right here and the guy that gave us the quest wants us to take the AKM throw it into the anomaly and see if it gets fixed or not. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But along the way, I need to talk to a guy named Razor over here because there was a rumor that he might have a different job for me. Combat training. I can teach you a few things, but you have to pay for it. For 200 bucks, I'll tell you about body armor. For 300, I can show you how to kill guards quietly. Which would you like? The silent takedown? Take this piece of rope, you sneak up behind the target, and then you wrap the rope around his neck and strangle him. It has a big knot in the middle to keep him from screaming. You just have to be really forceful and don't let go in the middle of the process or you're going to get busted. Okay. I guess I know how to assassinate people now. I've got a garret. Yeah, I can put that inside my tool slot. Now I can... That's kind of like violent, but it's also kind of awesome and James Bondish. So I sort of accept this situation. I do have a flashlight. This game has lots of little lighting effects and whatnot for when it gets dark. As of right now, the sun should be coming up pretty shortly. We're going to have to figure out how to get through this military blockade, which I think is, yeah, this way right here. So let's see if we can take care of that. I don't know if these guys are just going to, like, let me through or not. It looks like they don't care. They're letting me go straight to the military blockade. As far as what kind of content is available inside of this game, there's mutant hunting, there's crafting, there's repairing, there's chemistry, there's herbalism, there's farming. There's a bunch of stuff you can do inside of this game. None of it is tremendously in-depth, 
at least on the production end, like you just kind of plant things and then they grow. But when it gets to the point where you're actually assembling things and like cooking food and whatnot, it actually does get kind of immersive. Like you can't really, there's no recipe book in this game, for example. You find little slips of paper and you memorize recipes from the slips of paper. And then you've just got to remember them when you go to craft stuff. That guy might see me. I'm a little bit worried about this. I do need to take him down, though. Oh, nope, he saw me. Okay, we're down behind the car. That's fair. That's fair. My gun is empty. All right. I'm going to kind of just, like, I'm not going to do anything crazy here. There we go. I got him. He's down. He knew I was back here somewhere, but he didn't know where I went. All right, so that other one is unaware of me right now, even though I've discharged my clob. That's what I call the scorpion. Like, I know it's called a scorpion, but I call it the clob because, you know... I have dignity, and I'm excited about my youth. Got casings over here. What kind of ammo you got? You got eight rounds out of there. You got any rounds in that one? Nope. Uh, these guns are in terrible durability right now. They need to be repaired before they're going to function properly. Uh, in this game, as the durability drops on your weapon, it functions exactly like it does in Escape from Tarkov. It jams up more. It has a higher possibility of having, like, a pinched round or, like, a bad feed or something like that. If I can get around behind this guy... I really want to gear out a guy because I've never unlocked this skill before. Uh, the game has taken on a big RPG bent since the last time we played it. So you may notice that the last time I played the game, I called it just sort of like Russian Siberian survival. This time around, I put RPG in the title, and there's a reason for that. Uh, the DLCs that came out for this game actually give you kind of like Fallout-style skills uh, that you put points into every time you level up. You may have noticed in the bottom left, we've got two meters right there. The game is divided up into survival experience, and the game is divided up into, I think, combat experience. And when those meters go up to the top, you get to get some skill points, and you put those into trees that make you stronger. Uh, I don't know exactly how to strangle this guy. Oh, there we go. I, th I think you got him, man. That was that was pretty beefy and violent. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't expect that animation right there. My man's got a 44 Magnum, and he's got a pump. Oh, if I loves me a pump shotgun, man. I like a pump shotgun a lot. Oh, my God. Wait, why? I have questions here. Why did we gouge out his eyeball? You were just supposed to strangle him, man. You weren't supposed to tear his eyeball out with your fingers. That, to me, just feels like we've taken this situation a little bit too far. Uh, we need to figure out a way to get this loot onto our person. Because what will happen is all loot and all characters despawn off the ground once you leave the zone and you kind of come back. So we either need to find a storage bin that we can throw half this stuff inside of or we need to loot it all and get it back to town so that we can sell it. I do have a decent selection of shotgun shells back at home. What's inside this locker right here? Bread. I love bread. And sausages. That's like two of my favorite things, all in rapid succession. What's in here? A field repair kit. It's got gadgets to repair, dismantle, or craft one item. Drop onto an equipped item to repair. Right-click to use as a workbench. Okay. I want to fix the shotgun. I love pump shotguns. I want it real bad. I want it real, real bad. I wasn't expecting to pick up a pump shotgun. We should also probably sleep for an hour. I'm playing this game on hardcore mode. So there's two different gameplay modes. There's normal and there's hardcore mode. In hardcore mode, the game only saves when you sleep. And so I'm constantly going to be taking power naps throughout the course of this video just to save my game real quick so that I don't lose progress. I'm pretty excited about this shotgun. Like, I'm pretty massively stoked about this. I think this is going to be cool as hell. Let me go get uh, retooled, and then we'll get back to the mission. The game does fit you up with a little bit of storage. You have this little locker over here when you come into the game. No, 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 cop. Stop that. There we go. Apparently, he's got that entire room hooked up to that one switch. And so you can just hit the light switch, and it kills all the everything. I need to, like, store some stuff up. But this is my storage right here. I don't have too much storage, but I have, like, a little bit. I personally feel like I need to be a little bit better about getting rid of my stuff. One complaint I do have about the game is that, like, I kind of wish you had space for three weapons. So, like, a primary, a secondary, and a melee. 
I think that's probably one of my only complaints about the game so far, is that this game is a little bit rough around the edges. It's a little tiny bit janky, but it's kind of like the good type of janky. Like, it's the kind of janky that you want to keep playing, the compelling janky. And uh, that's, I think, the only real gameplay complaint I have about this title after spending three or four hours with it last night is just that I wish I could carry more weapons. That's it. Sometimes I just wish I had more weapons on me. I'm going to store the human eyeball in there. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. It just kind of feels like I'm keeping evidence on my person right now. I've got some baked potatoes, I've got bread, and I've got sausages. We do have to feed ourselves. There are survival mechanics in this game, so this is your stamina meter. It goes down as you sprint and whatnot, and when it refills up, it slowly drains your energy bar. I feel like they've got it more or less balanced. It feels pretty fair to me, the amount of, like, I guess, energy you get for the amount of food that you eat. Sometimes it can feel like you've got to pack on a little bit too much food, but I'm willing to bet that since I'm like in the early phases of the game, I haven't gotten to the power foods yet either that fill you up all the way. And so I need these shotgun shells over here now that we're going to be a now that we're going to be a shotgun guy. There we go. Ooh, they gave us the good tube, dude. They gave us we get six shells. Foof. Okay. All right. I only really bring it up because my shotguns here can only have like four shells in them. And so having six shells to me is like wizard voodoo magic where I'm just like, oh, you get to have six shells? Beautiful. It's like four shells, but better. Uh, I do want that gasoline. Gasoline is kind of hard to come by in the zone. And you never know when you're going to come across a generator that you're going to have to fuel up in order to open some secret door or something else like that. It looks like there's a way to climb over the wall right there, though I'm not entirely sure why you would want to. It doesn't seem to be power. You see what I mean? This big generator over here is going to require me to run halfway around the world to go get it fuel. The game has this weird habit of giving you one less fuel than you need in the zone where the fuel comes from. I don't know why it happens like that. But basically, this is like the third time that this has happened where it's like, you need four fuel, but there's three fuel on the map. I may have to run back to my storage one more time to grab some more fuel because it feels like to me carrying around a bunch of gasoline in your back pocket and getting into gunfights just doesn't feel like that's an equation that's going to add up long term. Yeah, I'm going to have to go grab some gas from elsewhere. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of fuel inside my base right now. So, easy peasy lemon squeezy. But before I head back, there's a little herb over here. Uh, there are going to be herbs all over the map. I strongly recommend that you pick up herbs whenever you see them. It levels up your survivor skill, and then on top of that, a lot of the cooking recipes and a lot of the medicine recipes in this game require various herbs. There's also kind of like this side thing that the game does to earn money. Every now and again, you'll get a radio transmission from somebody saying they need a certain type of medicine and where they're at. And if you make the medicine and you deliver it to them, they'll pay you like 400 or 500 rubles, which can be a really nice side hustle in order to add a little bit of extra funds to your pocket because things are expensive inside the zone. Things are very expensive. Something simple like 60 rounds so that you can do your next quest can cost you a bundle. All right, so put three liters in the gas tank. Hit the generator switch. It's now open. I need to eat some food before we go through. Uh, because our energy meter is getting a little bit low and I don't want to deal with it under the line of fire. So we'll eat the sausages and we'll eat a bread. Looks good to me. We'll take a one hour power nap. And then we'll head through the gate. I'm kind of curious if there was a way to get through the gate without actively powering up the generator. I mean, I guess you would just go back to Sidorovich or what he's called Sidor in this game, but it's Sidorovich, dude. It's always Sidorovich. Uh, I guess you could just buy fuel from Sidorovich if you really need to. I don't remember which path I'm supposed to take. I wasn't paying attention when they gave me the quest. And unfortunately, this is definitely a game where you need to pay attention when they give you the quest. So you hear that rumbling right there? There's an anomaly around. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got sucked into it. Yep. There was an anomaly right there, and it exploded my butthole. Butthole used to be unexploded. Butthole now exploded. 
generally something to avoid on adventurous days. Um, I'm just going to keep throwing rocks. Okay, so we know there's one over here. What about up against the wall? Wall looks okay. Throw this that way. I think I see... I don't know if I can sneak past this. Why is it in video games that take place in Russia, they always have these big green gates and they never open, dude? That's like the most Russian video game of all Russian video game tropes ever, is that they always have these big green gates. It doesn't matter if you're playing DayZ. It doesn't matter if you're playing Tarkov. It doesn't matter if you're playing just, just Stalker. Like, they always have these green gates and dollars to donuts. You can never just slide these green gates open every single time. You gotta be careful about this. We're playing the game for keeps right now. Is there a hole in this fence? I can't see a hole in this fence. Yeah, there's no hole in that fence. So it looks like we gotta go around the, bla the, the back and maybe walk up that plank to jump inside. I think the gas station is where I'm supposed to be. We were supposed to find like an anomaly that fixes this AK. Also, there's something coming. I don't know what it is that's coming, but something's coming. I saw movement on the other side of the fence. This game does have realistic line of sight. Oh god, wolves. Okay. There we go, we got them. We're alright. Uh, we do want to harvest these wolves, because sometimes they'll drop gallstones or they'll drop blood, and we can use that in the creation of medicines that we can export out of the zone. So we'll, or we can use on ourselves if we end up really low health. I don't know if, so I saw more movement on that side. I don't know if those wolves were unrelated. Uh, the wolves were, okay, so how am I going to do this? Oh, this is sketchy. I don't like this. I think going around the back might be the better play, but it looks like this area is irradiated, maybe? Hold on, where's my Geiger counter? How many how many Runtgens am I looking at here? Well, we're not irradiated so far, so maybe it's just old signage. It's like Oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Okay. I don't have, so I have iodide pills back at my base, and I didn't bring them with me because I hadn't run into any radiation yet. Normally what I would do right here is I would quick save and just run through to see how bad the radiation is. But since we're playing on hardcore mode, that makes this a little bit more complicated. How bad is it? Is it like really bad? It actually doesn't look that terrible. I want that plant, but I don't want to get blowed up by an anomaly. Okay. Okay. Looks like we're safe right here. Kind of. Safe right here. I'm gonna grab the elf dock real fast. First time I saw that plant, I was like, what is that thing called? Oh, and I, awfully close next to each other on a keyboard, man. And I've been hanging out on the internet too much. It's made me uh, perverse. So can I go this way? No, I cannot go that way. Can I go this way? Okay, looks like we can go this way. And we're no longer getting irradiated, which is just beautiful. Looks like we can go this way. All right, let me get up on this fence. Just kind of hoping the wolves would pull over this way. Oh, well. We do need to figure out if there's any threats or anything around, though. Just in case I need to kite these wolves. I need to know what's safe and what's not. 
So there's a basement over there. God only knows what's in the basement, dude. Basements in the zone are terrible. Nothing good ever happens in any basement in the zone. Okay. Back this way. And damn, that's a big wolf, dude. That's like the ones, they released a whole bunch of wolves out in the country where one of my family members lives, out in like the White Mountains. They release timber wolves, dude, and they are unbelievably large. It is a really big wild dog, man. You'd be like, oh, it makes sense to me now why human beings are like naturally afraid of these things. Like, they're big. They're, they're real big. You'd be like, I don't think I've ever seen a dog that size in my life. Even coyotes can get kind of large. Like, I've seen some pretty big coyotes. Can I get up on the roof? Looks like there's stuff up on the roof or like somebody made like a barricade. Uh, we got a Chinese sports drink. We've got... What was that other thing I picked up? Popeye spinach. Oh, yeah, this game is full of like random fourth wall break. Not like huge amounts, but there are little jokes and things spread throughout the game uh, so for example it's strongly hinted that this one bandit is only attacking Sidorovich because he needs access to the chemistry facilities so that he can make a drug for his erectile dysfunction uh, and then they actually play that into the storyline where you don't know whether or not to trust the guy because he says that he got backstabbed by Sidorovich. Sidorovich says that he did it because his wang doesn't work. And when you kill him, you do find erectile dysfunction medication that he's crafted for himself on his person. And so, like, the game constantly is kind of, like, messing with you where you're like, that can't be a real thing. But it is. Who is this guy? It seems odd that this man is wearing sunglasses in a dark basement. Thank you for killing the wolves outside. They've been bothering me for a while. Oh, can I interview you? Name's Romanov. You might have heard people referring to me as the priest. They're damn right I'm a priest. Honor graduate from Leningrad Theological Academy in 1954, and I've been a priest until 78. Well, I was naive. Even at the age of 56, when I learned about the visitations, the ghouls, and the serums, I thought the end was coming. I wanted to come here and get a glimpse of the revelation, but I was wrong. It's just another chapter of humanity. Greed and bloodthirst. Uh, so why are you in a basement? In the past few years, I've been working on serum recipes, trying to find something that will help the sick. That's the least I can do, and I've used myself as a guinea pig. Last year, I made a mistake, and I poisoned myself. My eyes gave in, and I set up this safe house before I went completely blind. How did you manage to live in the zone while blind? Well, I don't want to live with Sador's gang. He's going to blackmail me into giving him all my recipes, which is why I'm here hiding. I have a friend who's been helping me, bringing me supplies, and I gave him serum in return. But he hasn't showed up for two weeks, and the supply is low, so can you help me out? Sure. I'm in dire need of supplies. To the east of the gas station, there's Zernaskaya train station. It's being held by the Legionnaires. Sometimes they get airdrop supplies. I don't know when, but if you keep an eye on rumors, you'll hear about it. Please bring me a parcel of supplies, and I'll give you a serum recipe. Okay. Ooh, okay, so here's the... In order to keep the video actually like gameplay, he does know about the anomaly that will fix this gun, and apparently there's some kind of like puzzling aspect to it. It doesn't always work. He said that it's temperamental and that we have to figure out its patterns, but he gave me some gasoline, and he gave me some clues, and if we trade with him, he's got a backpack side pocket. I want that. I feel like I never have enough inventory space, and so... If I can barter my way into some inventory space, I will take it for sure. I've only got like 1,600 rubles right now. Oh, I thought it said, I, never mind, I don't have the monies. I thought it said, I thought it said 255. I didn't see the zero at the end. I struggle with mathematics. Uh, you also had a news story. The reason why we're here is because we are an investigative reporter. And so throughout the game, you're going to find things. Uh, that will lead to news stories. And if you go back to a payphone, oh, it's potato bread. Uh, if you go back to a payphone and you send those pieces of information to your boss, uh, she will wire you money, basically. And so he had a news story over here that completed after I got done talking to him about the basic stuff. He gave me a key to the garage so that we can figure out the mad mechanic. I should probably save before I do that because it sounds like it can just as easily kill me as help me. 
but let's go take a look at this thing and figure out what it's got going on. I'm going to need to use my headlamp because it's getting kind of dark. Oh, good. It's irradiated in here, too. That's fun. Loot first? I think loot first. Ooh, a suppressed PMM. Nice. A makeshift landmine. That's horrific. Some more gasoline, too. Never have enough gasoline. The visitation event is happening. Hiding in an underground environment provides the best protection, but hiding in a building helps, too. If you have Tunguska Syndrome, oh, yeah, there's zombie virus in this game, and you can get affected by zombie virus. And unlike Stalker, so in Stalker, if you stay out in the Brain Melter or you stay out in any of the kind of, like, big anomaly storms, you just die and you get converted into a zombie. In this game, it's the opposite. The creatures here, they bite you and they give you Tunguska virus. So that's like wolves, that's zombies, that's anything you fight with in the zone that's a mutant can give you the Tunguska virus. And it slowly goes up and you're going to have to make serum, almost like Zombrex, to keep yourself from becoming a zombie. The way you cure it is that you've got to like mildly expose yourself to the anomaly storm from how I understand it. Uh, but it sounds like the visitation is here, so I should probably just go underground and wait it out. It's happening. Yeah. Okay, it's over. And what's interesting is we got survival XP for appropriately ducking and covering during that event. Cool stuff. I'll probably rest till morning, actually, so that we've got a little bit of sunlight on our shoulder while we try to do this. Because I don't like trying to use my headlamp. The headlamp's fine for when I'm, like, crawling through a, you know, like a, a dingy sewer or something. Alright, so, like, where's the mad mechanic? Is it in here? Oh, there it is right there. So, like, what happens if I just kind of, like, chuck the rifle in it? Oh, it doesn't hurt me. Okay. Oh, it broke a little bit. Okay. Fair enough. It's breaking a little bit. It looks a little bit less fizzly now. Does the little bit less fizzly make it repair? Oh, look at that, dude. It's repairing. Okay, so you got to use, like, the little fizzles. Like, when it's in full-on kind of Mucinex effervescent mode, yeah, you can't repair it. Uh-oh. There we go. I was going to say, where did I have this thing slotted a minute ago? So we're just going to have to time it out, it looks like. Dude, we're almost there. I've been timing out the pattern for like the last couple minutes, in all honesty. And we're almost there, dude. Okay, it's flaming back up. We just got to rotate it one more time. It's at like 97% durability. And then we'll be out of here. Raises an interesting question that if this anomaly stays here and I've got the key to it, it might be worth it to repair large amounts of guns here in order to get better sell prices on them as I go through the game. While that sounds and feels a little tiny bit tedious to me, the part of me that's kind of like a loot gremlin goblin like munchkin kind of wants to do it. All right, so the gun is fixed. It's all the way back up to maximum durability. So we should, in a perfect world, be able to take this back to Sador and then get our money. The other question I have is how do I get out of here? Oh, I just go through the front door. That's right. I forgot we kicked it open. Okay, so he wants me to go steal an airdrop as well. I sort of feel like it may not be the worst idea to save because it actually took forever for me to repair that gun. You guys didn't see it because I edited. I edited aggressively, but it, it took a while to repair the gun. Sir? I'm going to need you to, like not be on the bed yeah there we go i'll just sleep next to you don't worry about it don't don't worry about it father romanoff i'll just sleep next to you we can cuddle we can i think we can snoodle a little bit i think is the word for it 
What is this? Oh, you can actually siphon gas out of there. Cool. A silenced PMM is kind of an interesting idea, too. I want to bring that other AKM that we got off that soldier back over here and repair it as well, but I don't know. You can hold down X at any time in this game, and X will show you if there's anything interactable around you. So there's an anomaly there. No anomalies this way, though. I'm trying to get out of the debris field, man. There's a lot of anomalies around here. And I would rather not deal with any of them. All right, let's get the shotgun back on out. We'll just kind of like, oh my god, there's more anomalies? Where are they at, though? Oh, I see leaves. Yeah, there's some kind of gravitational anomaly right there. Weird. I don't know if I should go further on into the zone or not. suppose we may as well. Like, what does this zone connect to? So army cordon's back there. It connects to whatever the hell. Oh, Zernaskaya Station. That was the place where they had all those airdrops, right? Uh, these Legionnaire guys, I've killed, like, a lot of them. So I have a sneaking suspicion that they're not going to like me very much when I roll up here. Like, I, I definitely feel like I'm not going to be welcome in this establishment. Then again, I've killed a lot of them. So I sort of know that I can take them. What's this, like a little, oh. Is he going to come investigate because I turned off the lights? They sound kind of agitated. Oh, they're definitely going to shoot at me. I didn't know if they were going to shoot at me or not. I killed some of them on a different map, but I wasn't sure if, like, word traveled around. Depending on where this guy wants to go. Alright, well, there's one down. I don't think the rest of them came over. I don't think they heard the gunshot either, which is kind of weird. Man, that guy came charging out like he didn't even care, bro. One. Oh, he's got a grenade run. Did they just blow themselves up with their own grenade? One thing this game does not do well is like the uh, the individual AIs for the little bandits and whatnot. Uh, not not the not the the smartest in the whole world. Uh, usually they just kind of have like overwhelming numbers. Occasionally they make smart plays. I got bandages. It's okay. Everybody knows that bullet wounds go away instantaneously if you put band-aids on them. Just keep reloading. We just keep peeking a corner. Oh, he's down, he's down, he's down. Does he have like a UN bullet vest on? I'm happy to say that this shotgun is quite good. Like, this shotgun is actually take care of business right now, which we only have a few more bullets for that business. But we can swap over to the PM, I guess, maybe. Yeah, let's use a health restore serum. We got a little bit irradiated by it, but our health is looking pretty bad, so... I kind of, like... I have the shells that I have right now. It sounds like there's a lot more of them in there, though. We might not have the ammo to make this thing play out. Give me the PM. We'll set that up for the, uh, the 380 or whatever it is that this thing fires.
Can I get your ammo? I just need bullets. That's all that I need is bullets. Here, take this PM. I will take your score. Oh, that thing is busted as hell, dude. Okay, that's not going to work. There's nobody left over there. Oh, dude, no, they got me. I was so close. I think that was the last guy, too. Oh, no, bro. Oh, no. That was the worst. I just didn't have enough ammo. I bet two shells would have dropped that last guy, too. Ah, uh, well, this is Tunguska, man. Uh, I think this game is really rad and only continues to get better through the tireless efforts of the developer who seems to really, really like this idea. If you ever think that you want to make a game, but like you're not the best artist or you're not the best animator or you're not the best writer or whatever, forget all those excuses. This game is the perfect example of what you can do with very limited means if you care enough to just keep working on it. The last time we covered Tunguska, it was a pretty janky game that ultimately kind of channeled that jankiness in order to build up the atmosphere and the ambience of what is effectively Stalker. Part of the appeal of Stalker was the fact that it was pretty janky too. And so anyways, a year or so, year and a half later, I'm happy to say that this game has been worked on, it's been patched, and I think the end result of that effort is honestly that the game has turned out to be something a little bit special. It's turned into something akin to like budget stalker that you could play right now. It's got some decent writing. Like there is a nice sense of exploration in the game. It does feel like you discover things and you find things. Uh, there's loot all over the place. The crafting system is very interesting and very unique in the sense that there's no recipe book and you've got to memorize it all according to like heat levels and how long things stay on the fire. Like there's a lot of fun to be had in this game right here if you're into stalker-esque titles. I think I just got grazed with that one. This guy's not coming out to take the bait and come find me. If I make more noise. Maybe if I throw a rock. My man's terrified of rocks. Oh, he caught every pellet in that one. Gross. Can't really afford to be wasting shells. Oh, okay. All right. There needs to be... I need to get in here somehow. But since they've got a guy at a front gate, it's going to be hard to sneak. There we go. Just kind of like a little, little bit of the old uh, sneaky cheeky peeky, man. can't be missing shots. Missing shots is not good. I don't have enough ammo to miss shots. That guy's down. Dude, I know we can clear this place and get all of this sexy time loot for ourselves, man. Like, I know they want me to finesse this mission, but I'm not a finesse kind of guy. Oh no, there's an anomaly on that corner! All of them walked across it and none of them got blown up by it. Oh, dude. Dude, that's so depressing. But yeah, this is Tunguska. It's reasonably impressed me. I'm, I'm fairly happy with this in terms of the amount of effort the developers put forward in order to make what is kind of like a Stalker spinoff. It's got a little bit of jank and crust on it, but the original Stalker had a whole bunch of jank and crust on it. I would know. I was there. I bought it on release day, and part of the appeal was that little rind that it developed along the edges. Uh, this game has had multiple DLCs now that have put out, some of them free, some of them not. I didn't show you the leveling up system, but there it is right there. As you kill guys and as you do survival stuff, you can just put points into these very simple trees right here, but each one has perks that unlock when you hit certain thresholds, so that's also kind of cool and allows you to specialize your characters a little bit more than you used to be able to. This was not a thing the last time I played the game, but I think this comes from one of the DLCs maybe? And then, of course, uh, the DLCs also change up character creation and make that a little bit more in-depth. Uh, there's, like, a full storyline DLC. There's a full Halloween DLC. 
that gives you access to loot and new dungeons and kind of new stuff. And so lots of interesting things happening with this game. I hope that the developer, who is a member of the Nerd Castle, continues to work on it and continues to add more fun things because I think he's on a good path right now. And hopefully the game remains profitable and it remains worth putting out content for. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out uh, Tunguska, where I'm getting riddled with bullet holes right there because that guy won't stop camping the window. And I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.